Good morning from Canada and good evening in Bangladesh. On behalf of Bangabandhu Center for Bangladesh Studies in Canada, I welcome all of you to today's special webinar episode focusing on the life, work and legacy of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. This session is jointly organized by Bangabandhu Center in collaboration with the Bangladesh High Commission in Ottawa. We decided to kickstart the series with this episode titled Julia Curie Medal of Peace, Context, History of the Award in a Divided World, a Reflection. Besides focusing mainly on the achievement of Bangabandhu as a recipient of the award, we aim to reintroduce the phenomenal leader to the North American audience in general and Canadians in particular. Those who have tuned today to watch the webinar will get to listen directly from some of the personalities who worked with the great leader in the past. In addition, invited eminent personalities from Bangladesh would also share their thoughts with us on this theme this morning. As we begin, let me do the treaty acknowledgement. The Bangabandhu Center for Bangladesh Studies is located on original lands of Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and on the homeland of Methi Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward on in the partnership with indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, reflection is a critical process because it is incumbent on the types of lens that one puts on in reviewing some of the historical contexts in the past. And probably only human beings can do this process. As we know, Bangabandhu was awarded the Julia Curie Medal of Peace on May 23rd, 1973. This peace award was the first ever international award for Bangladesh. And it was an international recognition to Bangabandhu for his outstanding contribution to establishing world peace. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind the audience also that we are speaking about the world scenario of the early 70s when the birth of a nation has just taken place amidst the height of the Cold War while two superpowers were vying to take control of countries under their control. The US was deeply engrossed in Vietnam, Russians were prepping for its upcoming invasion in Afghanistan and expanding their sphere of influence globally. Dear audience, I'm now going to read out the news published in October 1972 in a national daily, which broke the news of the award. And I quote here, a World Peace Council Presidential Committee meeting in its closing session awards the highest honor Julia Curie Medal of Peace to the leader of Bangladesh's liberation struggle, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, along with Cuba's revolutionary leader, Fidel Castro, and three more outstanding peace leaders. World Peace Council Presidential Committee in a special message to the UN Secretary General and to Chairman of the 27th General Assembly calls upon all members of nation to accept application of Bangladesh for full membership in the interest of peace and the universality of the world body." Unquote. The audience, in this regard, I would also like to share with you, with, uh, with you that Bangladesh will introduce the Bangabandhu Peace Award in November this year, making the ongoing but centenary celebration of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. The award is to be conferred by hosting two-day World Peace Conference to promote the global culture of peace and tolerance. Ladies and gentlemen, and dear audience, at this stage, let me welcome our chief patron, His Excellency, Honorable High Commissioner of Bangladesh, Dr. Khalilu Rahman, for his opening remarks. Sir, floor is yours now. Uh, good morning uh, from Ottawa. I think good evening in Dhaka. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Kafsar Ahmed. Let me also introduce him to the audience and to everybody. Uh, he is the Executive Director of the Bangabandhu Center for Bangladesh Studies in Canada. Uh, the center was established within three months of my coming to Canada on the 50th anniversary of our independence, that is 26th of March this year. And since then, uh, we are uh, organizing uh, seminars, uh, and others. 
Uh, the idea is uh, to deepen the existing uh, friendly relations between Bangladesh and Canada. At the same time, uh, since both the countries are deeply committed to peace and security, so the center is also dedicated to promote uh, peace and security across the globe. And uh, well, as High Commissioner, definitely my objective is how we can also explore new areas of cooperation uh, between Canada and Bangladesh and how the center can uh, play a uh, facilitating role in this because uh, we are also uh, inviting um, a lot of Canadian policymakers, including uh, honorable member of parliament, senators, and uh, senior government officials uh, to our uh, OE winners and uh, these policy dialogues. So having said that, let me just you know uh, welcome uh, uh, Chief Patron of the Center, uh, the most distinguished panel uh, uh, of today's OE winner. I know them, all of them, all the three definitely by name, uh, by their work. But one person, you know, uh, is very close to my heart, and you know, I have been working with him in many areas. Uh, uh, who is uh, uh, Professor uh, Said Mudassar Ali Sir? Uh, I worked with him in, in uh, I think, on many occasions. Uh, I just like to mention that, uh, especially uh, I worked with him when the reassessment of the community. Health cleaning program was done in 2009 after it was stopped by BNP government, BNP Jamaat, and of course, this uh, followed by this caretaker government for seven years it was stopped. So it was reassessed, and I was deeply associated with this reassessment. And also, you know, as uh, I think uh, Dr. Kausar will be introducing, uh, giving the full introduction uh, to all of our distinguished uh, uh, speakers. But I have to say that Mother uh, Sali Sar is the, also the president of Community Clinic Health Support Trustee Board. And uh, he was very kind to also keep me as one of the you know, pro bono advisor uh, of the task. So I have been working uh, in this area with him for a long time. So let me just you know, say a few words you know, about Dr. Kausar Hamid has uh, already provided the context of today's you know, subject. Uh, first of all, I like to, you know, um, uh, just uh, recall uh, the father of the nation, uh, the greatest Bengali of all times, Bangamandu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. He was the symbol uh, of peace throughout his life. He was a world leader who always believed in non-violence and was an ardent advocate for peace. Even in undivided India, he worked with Indian national leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Hussein Said Sarwardi and others to ensure that peace and social harmony exists in the society. He even risked his life many a time to stop the communal riots before, during, and after the partition of India. Uh, if we look at the Pakistan's last general elections held on 7th of December 1970, that was uh, one by Awami League led by Bangladesh Sheikh Mujib Rahman because he never believed in you know any other way to really go to power to ensure the rights of Bengalis. But the Pakistani rulers refused to hand over the power to him. And again, if you look at his historic speech of 7 March 1971, that is now preserved in the memory of the World Heritage uh, Register of UNESCO. That was effectively the declaration of independence of Bangladesh, but it was always non-violent. And after the independence of Bangladesh, Bangabundi ensured that friendship to all, malice to none, became the cardinal principle of Bangladesh's foreign policy. It was the culmination of his lifelong philosophy of promoting peace. The treaty of peace, friendship, and cooperation with India leadership in the non-aligned movement, joining the YC, UN, Commonwealth, and other organizations are proofs of his turning from Bangabundu to a world friend. And as uh, Dr. Ahmed said, when the world was bitterly divided, 
he was awarded by the World Peace Council the Julia Curie Medal for Peace. Within one year, four months, 12 days of his leading the country as president and prime minister. And I'm very happy to uh, uh, say that Bangabandhu's legacy of promoting and spreading peace home and abroad continued under the leadership of his able daughter, the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. During his first tenure as Prime Minister between 1996 and 2001, she successfully concluded the Ganges Water Treaty with India and ensured equitable share of water between the two countries, ending the 25 years of dispute on water sharing. And I'm very proud to say that uh, that was the time I was working in our High Commission in New Delhi. Uh, we can recall the travel in the city of Hill Tops region. But within one year, six months, 2nd of December, 1977, the Honorable Prime Minister was successful in concluding the Chirang Hill Tax Peace Accord. That also ended the decades long insurgency in the area. And uh, even during his, uh, her first tenure, under her guidance, Bangladesh played the major role, leading role, uh, uh, and the sponsoring country to adopt the UN resolution on, on the culture of peace. Uh, and then we, again, during uh, her third tenure, in 2017, what we have seen, the 1.1 million Rohingyas came to Bangladesh. She could have closed the border. She could have confronted Myanmar, but she didn't do it. She extended her arms to, to, to accept this hapless, persecuted people. And she and her government is seeking peaceful resolution to the crisis. So Bangladesh always always pursued the path of peace. And this is the lesson we learned from our founding father, Bangladesh Sheikh Muzi Brahman. So I uh, uh, recall this uh, leader and pray for uh, his uh, soul for eternal peace and the uh, his family members who are also killed on 15th of August, 1975. I also recall our martyrs of our independence war. 3 million murders and 2 million uh, our sisters, mothers who lost their sanctity for the independence of this country. I just, you know, end by saying that, as Kausar said, this is a very unique year for Bangladesh. We are observing two historic occasions, the birth centenary of the father of the nation, Bangladesh Brahman, and the golden jubilee of our independence. On these two historic occasions, Bangladesh, as Kausar says, is hosting the World Peace Conference in Dhaka. It is in November, 4th and 5th November, Kausar. It is not in, uh, uh, sorry, in December, not in November, in December, where Bangabandhu's uh, philosophy of peace and its relevance uh, today for global peace and security and living in harmony with dignity by all would be highlighted along with the efforts of the current government of Bangladesh under the able leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina for promotion of global peace, security, and development. So I just you know, end here, and I just like to return the floor to Dr. Ahmed to conduct the, the session for our, uh, to, to, to listen to our distinguished panelists. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your uh, uh, very much, I would say, insightful uh, and well-covered uh, points. And as a chief patron, uh, these are very important words for the audience. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, start the session with our distinguished panelist. And first in the line is, as we already announced, Professor uh, Said Mudassar Ali. And I'm going to read a very uh, brief uh, bio uh, because um, he has a whole lot of positions in his illustrious career as a, as a, as a physician and as an activist uh, in the social side. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Professor Dr. Said Mudassar Ali is an ophthalmic surgeon uh, in Bangladesh and was the health, family, welfare, and social welfare advisor to the Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina from 2009 to 2013. 
He is the founder of Mojibunnesa Eye Hospital, the first registered eye hospital in Bangladesh. And also he is the founding editor-in-chief of the Bangladesh Ophthalmic Journal, the first peer-reviewed ophthalmic journal in Bangladesh. Uh, he is the chairman Bangladesh Medical Research Council, President Community Clinic Health Support Trustee Board, former health and social advisor to Honorable Prime Minister, advisor to uh, Honorable Prime Minister vaccine and also an advisor on COVID-19 vaccine issues. So uh, dear audience, uh, it's a privilege to introduce uh, Professor Dr. Sayed Madassar Ali. And on that note, uh, dear audience, uh, our sessions would be uh, today uh, conducted both in Bangla and English uh, for the convenience of uh, the, read, uh, the spectators. So uh, for the Bangla part, we'll definitely provide you the subtext uh, after the session. So without further ado, uh, Professor Dr. Said Mazasar Ali, floor is yours, sir. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Kausar. Uh, because uh, you have done a wonderful job on uh, on behalf of your organization, uh, Bongo Bandhu Center, along with our illustrious High Commissioner in Canada, uh, Dr. Khalilur Rahman. I know him for many years. In fact, uh, during his student life, he was also an activist uh, for the ideology of Bongo Bandhu. And uh, from 97, when he was in Geneva, I know him since then, there have been practically no gap. And in fact, I have also worked under him for a certain time in 2002, when we had difficult time. And when Honorable uh, uh, President uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina visited Delhi, and uh, Dr. Khalil was a great help to keep him apprised about Bangladesh situation on day-to-day -day basis. And uh, she liked him a lot. And in 2009, when we were, we formed the government and I was the advisor, and Dr. Khalil Rahman when went to my room, I directly took him to Honorable Prime Minister. When I told him that Dr. Khalil has come, he told bring him in. And he offered him that uh, which country you want to go. And uh, uh, then he advised uh, uh, Mr. H.T. Imam that take Khalil with you. And he's also from your area and give him the place he wants to work with. So one can understand that how much affectionate he is. And uh, before I start the formal talk, I must pay respect to father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the greatest Bengali of all time. And uh, really, uh, it, uh, I have got many personal memory with him because I know him from 1961 uh, till 1973 when I left the country for my FRCS degree in UK. And I, uh, I have seen many things about his quality and I remember many of the issues. Uh, as for example, he would always prefer to sit in front of the car or Jeep, not behind. And he once was telling me that uh, the one of the difficult job has been that when I'm in this position, I cannot sit in front, I have to sit behind. These are one of the few issues. And I've been very lucky that I have also worked uh, with the father of the nation's daughter, Sheikh Hasina. Still, I work with her and I'm in touch with, even in this morning in our country uh, on the vaccine issue. Uh, uh, no, not today, day before yesterday, because he was going to make a statement in the parliament about the uh, this vaccine issue and you'll be very happy to know that Bangladesh is going to roll out vaccine from tomorrow. Though government has not declared that this will be a continuous process, but uh, as far as I know internally, it will be declared soon because the amount of vaccine we are going to get 
and the because the vaccine we bought from China, they have also committed. So I don't think we shall have any problem. And I must uh, congratulate the organizer that uh, really for choosing such a subject, because in this divided world, really Bangabandhu not only relevant uh, as a peace uh, a recipient of the first Bangladeshi to Julio Kori, but he's also relevant with its philosophy and thought. Because as you know, and here I have got uh, one of the most respected uh, freedom fighter, Mofidul Haq, because I respect him uh, from my core of heart, because I had a relative to him, a much more cozy life in Muzib Nagar, which was in fact in 8th Theater Road at that time, which is now known as Shakespeare Avenue. And I was assistant to Dr. T. Hossein. And uh, more or less, I had a full-time car and collecting medicine for the refugees and then distributing whatever small way we could to the uh, Mukti force. Uh, so really, compared, uh, just because uh, he's in front of me, not because of that, but uh, they have, uh, Mofidullah, along with few of his colleagues, has done another greatest job, which will be in the history of Bangladesh all the time that they have uh, formed the Mukti Juddha Trust, as you know. And before them, nobody thought of. And the present Prime Minister, they know it very well, and I'm sure they will talk to me. In this divided world, uh, I must say, please you raise your hand or put on the right hand side if I exceed the time, uh, because I decided to put my phone on, but I forgot that uh, uh, the life and the, if we consider the 1971 liberation war, we know very well that uh, now we know we are not, many of the things are not known before, that in 1947, when British Raj was going to leave the then India as a whole and leaving including Eastern wing of Pakistan. Uh, Bangabandhu at that time, he was known as Muzib Bhai. He uh, told to some of his uh, friends and colleagues that the way the country is getting independence, probably we have to independent, we have to achieve the independence again. So many times he was in jail and whatever post he occupied in party or government, I think that is not much relevant. Which is much more relevant is his thought and how much advanced he was in thinking. He and uh, he did, he was a straightforward. He did always say that I'm not a communist or I'm not an underground leader. So my style is different. But on the other hand, I believe in socialism. I believe in equality, which is more than many of the leftists till today. Because unfortunately, like all over the world, in Bangladesh also, real leftists we need, but there is a very shortage because of their division among themselves. Here, Bangabandhu become relevant. And Bangabandhu was one of the persons who thought about this uh, in, uh, in advance that what can happen in all his speech and writing as a starting as a student leader till his death he always believed in the peace as i was referring about 1971 he believed that uh, the peaceful movement is the real type of movement knowing fully well that uh, ultimately the pakistan will not uh, give independence to our country, Bangladesh, without army struggle. But he never mentioned about it. But on the other hand, he prepared the countrymen for that. 
but uh, so that nobody in the world can say that uh, Bongo Bondu was secessionist or Bongo Bondu is a man who is against peace. So in a peaceful, anybody who want to do a movement have to have an ideology in their heart and have to work very hard to achieve that. Bangabandhu did that very well up to the last moment. Bangabandhu never thought that he will come back alive from Pakistan. He knew very well, but he knew also that if on the 26th of uh, uh, March, if uh, he would also, uh, along uh, with many of us, I joined in, in the Mujibnagar government on 6th of May, 19. Uh, 71. So, may, like many of us, if he would go, then the Pakistani forces would uh, search every house in Dhaka city and would crush. Of course, Pakistani forces did that later on, but which was beyond the imagination of many of us. At least I confess now, being at the age of 78 plus, that really I also did not thought that they can go up to that level. But there was really no level at all. So I am very happy that the uh, you have got also Professor Sadeka, who is my niece. And I feel proud to have such a niece. And uh, Khalil is like my younger brother for a long time. Until I die, he will remain. Uh, only one uh, difference with him is he is in matter, not only in matter of Bangabandhu, in matter of principle, he does not know how to negotiate. Though he is a diplomat, but many times I have seen it in lifestyle, he in, in his individual matter behaved in a non-diplomatic way. By that I mean by any post or any position does not attract him. But what attacked him? He got that challenge now, and I'm confident that he will be with our government for more time to really serve the purpose for which uh, the Bangabandhu's daughter, Sheikh Hasina, has chosen him in a difficult terrain of land, I know. Because uh, the job he has to do, uh, not uh, beyond the routine job, Kausar and other definitely knows it very well, I am sure. And uh, he's making progress, but uh, in such a progress is not a visible thing. It goes on in a different angle. And uh, he has got, his life also can be threatened and he knows it. And he knows and knowing fully well, he has taken the challenge. And I believe that as Bongo Bandhu is relevant to the now the divided world for peace. Similarly, for that, uh, Dr. Khalil will also try as a disciple of Bongo Bandhu from his student life to achieve what Bongo Bandhu could not finish, which now his daughter Sheikh Hasina is trying in the same way. Uh, 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 our present prime minister is also for peace. And sometime uh, we, at least personally, I differ with him on many issues, but he, she laughed and says, well, uh, when uh, you are in a helicopter in a city, you can see all the roads, but if you are a car, you can see only that road. So I am in a helicopter, so I have to look into everything. I shall finish here, I think I must say, I believe I have already exceeded my time. Uh, Kausar is very nice that he has not yet uh, asked me to stop, but because the other two are also equally important, um, they will contribute a lot. So I should be also judicious to them. If we want to be judicious like Bangabandhu in establishing peace. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, it's it's an absolutely an honor to have you with us, sir. 
this morning and uh, not only your personal affiliation with the bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman but also your personal insights about the philosophies uh, that is still driving and uh, how bangabandhu's philosophy is still relevant thank you once again from our side so dear audience now uh, let's uh, move on to our second distinguished uh, speaker today uh, she needs no introduction actually uh, but nonetheless just to uh, do the part of formalities here professor sadiq halim uh, is uh, is a professor in university of dhaka and she is the first female dean of the faculty of social science of this university in 1988 uh, she was appointed as the teacher of the department of social science and later she received a second post graduate and phd degree from magill university and uh, with the common scholarship and that is why we have a canadian connection with professor dr halim thank you mm -hmm. and and uh, she then completed her post doctorate uh, uh, with the commonwealth staff fellowship from the university of bath in united kingdom from july 2009 mm -hmm. to 14 she served as the first women information commissioner again another uh, very uh, uh, i mean i would uh, laudable uh, addition to her career she was a member of the national education policy committee 18 of 2009 and special educationist committee so without further ado uh, let's welcome professor dr sadika halim floor is yours ma'am thank you very much uh, kasar i am very humbled by your introduction and i am i feel very uh, honored to participate in this webinar with uh, professor said mudassir ali and mr mufidul haq and also the honorable high commissioner dr khulil rahman actually uh, the, very rightly uh, said mudassir ali has given the introduction and uh, the you know the importance of this particular uh, webinar because today we are amid this uh, the pandemic celebrating the 44 years of bangabandhu's julia curry award and among many uh, not only bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman got it but also i think for the new generation who were not even born during that time not even i was a uh, very young uh, master that i was going to school in that time uh, with bangabandhu fidel castro got it uh, also jawaharlal nehru indira gandhi Martin Luther King, Yasser Arafat. So, so I feel very proud that I am a citizen of Bangladesh, and as since I am a citizen of Bangladesh, and Bangabandhu worked so hard, and he was the key contributor in, in terms of uh, also he worked a kind of as a driving force behind uh, the independence because he was arrested in 25th March in 1971, but you know it was he, him. who actually kind of encouraged everybody to unite so why did he get this award i mean for the new generation it is very important to know because he sacrificed his life and he contributed for the well being of this uh, country for the people and also he wanted to build a sonar bangla to free from which which he kind of vision would be free from hunger poverty illiteracy as uh, professor mabas uh, mudassir ali said rightly that he was in favor of equality and i'm i would uh, say that he was more into equity and uh, then equality because i with uh, due respect i kind of differ here a little bit and also he wanted to address the exploitation also he a kind rightly address the discrimination didn't time when we were within pakistan as is pakistan people were suffering in terms of socio economic and political uh, uh, you know spheres so these are the major issues that brought this international award as uh, mr kasar has rightly pointed out that it was the, the first international award ever right after the independence so Uh, the new generation need to know that why actually uh, bangabandhu achieved it with all my respect uh, i would like to touch on certain issues that um, as a trained sociologist that uh, still uh, still i think that uh, those issues are very important and our policy makers uh, particularly his uh, very uh, able daughter our honorable prime minister sheikh hasina she is taking his vision kind of um you know 
kind of materializing it and also taking it ahead of time uh, for us too. Because uh, we are now celebrating the golden jubilee of Bangladesh, birth centenary of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, at the same time, birth centenary of University of uh, Dhaka. Uh, so there are three celebrations, but of course, in uh, due to the pandemic, we are all connected over Zoom and trying to make our voice heard. First to touch on that in terms of his equality and equity thing, that he always thought about the farmers. And uh, you know that we, in, in Bangla, we said uh, Bangla Krishok. So he always touched, um, you know, kind of thought about it, them and uh, struggled for their right. Uh, right after the independence, uh, he actually came up with some policies and which were, became very difficult to uh, materialize because of, there were so many red tapings. And Bongobundu was for everybody. He was people's person. But I must say that the people who were concerned to materialize his mission and the vision he had when he liberated this country, he gave leadership to this country to get liber liberated and the people who were in, in charges to implement his visions, there are signs in you know, at certain times there are some, you know certain mismatches with his vision, because Bangabandhu tried to implement it that hundred bigha that actual bigha kono khazna dite hob mane mokuf kore dawat kotha kati ni bolishe je jomir malikana actual bigha upore dawat jabe na that he said specifically. Ebang pochish bigha jomi manushe. But what we have seen in reality that he couldn't materialize it because, uh, you know, we were not actually nice. We must say that. We must confess that we, we disappointed him. So he was not, you know, happy with it. In one of his speech uh, in uh, 1970, uh, and, and also in 1972, both the speeches, actually, he echoed the same thing. He said, Amade chashi holo shabche dukhi o nijjati to ebong tadir abustha unnuti jono amadir uddoger birat angsho abosshri tadir pichone niyojito korte hobe. So this is, this is what Bangabandhu was. And what he that, did that he actually uh, introduced some uh, uh, like kind of legal uh, legal mechanisms to protect the rights of the farmers. He introduced 1973 order, an ordinance, and he institutionalized the agriculture sector, the research. And, and we know very one particular institution, uh, Bari, which is world renowned now. And, and his, um, his vision has been kind of uh, taken into consideration very sincerely and seriously and current prime minister sheikh hasina she's investing a lot into this kind of research on agriculture and at the same time he felt the importance of the jute and he said that the, that the jute that has been actually exported to west pakistan west pakistan actually flourished in terms of all our resources and and there all the desert uh, states of there pakistan they kind of developed you know, uh, because we, we, we had to give them, we had to surrender to them. So this is the, these are the issues that Bangabandhu raised and the people, people were convinced, he could convince the people that we are being exploited. Another uh, important issue uh, to me as a sociologist is his concept of Shomobai, uh, cooperative, and which actually the current prime minister, she has taken it further and she has introduced this um, program called Amar Bari, Amar Khamar, which in English we can say my home and my farm. And uh, I had the opportunity to visit a uh, number of uh, Amar Bari, Amar Khamar, and I could see the people so happy because he, she has distributed among those who are the most marginalized and most needed like kind of you know separated women, widow or, or the husband just left the women, nowhere to go. And those uh, families who do not have any land or any job or any source of employment. So she actually has taken the vision uh, further. And as uh, Modasir uh, 
Ali Sir rightly pointed out about the four pillars that the constitution is based on is the secularism, uh, socialism, democracy, and nationalism. Of course, in terms of secularism, my interest lies with a lot of uh, uh, like Mongovundu's ideas on secularism. And Amartya Sen, uh, just a few months back in one of the uh, webinar, uh, he mentioned that Bongobundu never uh, said that secularism means no religion. What he meant is that that everybody should, uh, you know, irrespective of everybody's religion, we should respect everybody's uh, religion. And and he kind of, uh, you know, had all these progressive ideas within himself. So I would urge through this webinar, uh, since it is being broadcasted in ATV Canada, uh, uh, the new generation, those who are listening, to read the English version of Amar Dekha Noya Chin, Mongobundur Atto Jiboni, because in the Noya Chin, uh, he was very young when he went to China and uh, as a member of, member of the particular team from East Pakistan. And he wrote this book actually when he was in jail in 1954. And he went to China to attend a, a seminar conference on peace, actually, it was a peace conference. And he actually uh, talked about a lot. He was so well, like, kind of um, motivated by the China's didn't plans on uh, land reform, uh, women's emancipation, uh, cooperatives, uh, healthcare system, all this system. So. I would I would really urge my new generation to look into it, and this is this is where like uh, when we say that the way that uh, Awami League separated from Muslim uh, Awami League, uh, you know, and uh, some historians in Bangladesh uh, claims that certain leaders the then time were kind of influenced by the Western ideas, but I do not fully buy this argument because when I read Ahmad Dakhanoya Chin. I could see that the young Bongobundu, he was a visionary man. And he he looked in, he, he was such a keen observer. Like um, he he was uh, he attended several you know state functions, and one of the functions was where uh, it, uh, there was a like a state function where women uh, were participating as national guard and they were giving salute to Masatung. And Bongobundu said, Purusher Bap Naki Meguli. So, uh, secular ideas, the progressive ideas, particularly in terms of four marriages. But you have to take the consent of the first wife. So, you have to take the consent of the first wife. So, যে আমি যদি আমার প্রথম স্ত্রীকে রেখে আমি দ্বিতীয় তৃতীয় চতুর্থ বিবাহ করি আমি চারজনকে একই রকম ভালোবাসতে পারি এই কথাটা বঙ্গবন্ধু বলেছেন আমার দেখা নয় চিনে সো আমি আই এম ভেরি অ্যামেজড এবং আমি when i read this book i i started using this book in my classroom particularly in my gender courses so uh, all his visions uh, also that uh, right to self determination concept which is also very important. It is because of this we liberated from Pakistan. But this concept was also used by our current uh, prime minister when she signed the treaty with the Chittagong Hill Tracks. And right to self-determination, the way she used to give autonomy to the people, because we know they were in insurgency for 20 years and she stopped it. And one nice thing about it is that she took her father's vision ahead here that she, without any third party's intervention, uh, this treaty was signed between the government of Bangladesh, the then government in 97, and with the Jana uh, Shanguti Shangsa. So th this claimed a lot of international recognition for our Honorable Prime Minister. But I must say that the kind of the peace, uh, uh, the concept of peace, she actually kind of inherited from her father got well, uh, you know, ex, uh, kind of exhibited by this, uh, uh, by this particular treaty. So I'm being asked to stop, but I must say just, I would like to touch on the uh, certain issues that Sheikh Hasina has taken forward, particularly Bangabundu's vision, is that one particular issue is that UN's unanimous adaptation of Bangladesh's 
Prime Minister's proposal of culture of peace. At the same time, she has given shelter to Rohingya, uh, you know, 1.1 million Rohingyas, and also uh, she has taken initiative to relocate a section of the Rohingyas in the Pashan Chor. At the same time, I must say that, uh, of course, you know, we were very much critiqued in terms of the Podda Bridge, but we are hoping that in the next, in the following year, not this following year, but the next year, her um, this bridge is going to the construction is going to uh, finish complete, and we would be able to uh, start communicating with the southern part of Bangladesh. So she actually did it, and uh, with our own money. And also that uh, another one major issue that I would like to touch on is that Bangladesh has experienced terrorist attacks by different organizations, but she has taken strong grip over it. And she got internationally, uh, you know, highly uh, uh, recognized for this particular deed, because we know that this Islamic terrorist, they would like to, you know, see Bangladesh as an Islamic state, and they would like Sharia law to govern us. So this is where um, Honorable Prime Minister has taken her, uh, you know, bold step and the kind of upholding the spirit of Bangabandhu's uh, secular Bangladesh. So with that note, uh, I thank the organizers, uh, Bangabandhu Center for Bangladesh Studies in collaboration with the uh, High Commission of Bangladesh in Canada for inviting me as one of the speaker. Thank you so much. A very good evening to you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Sadika Halim, for a well-rounded and I would say uh, 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 very much informative uh, part of the discussion today. Uh, thank you so much. As a trained sociologist, she has shared uh, some of the important aspects of the legacy of the father of the nation. So uh, now it's time to uh, introduce and welcome uh, the uh, one of the most uh, important persons uh, today in the in our semi uh, webinar because he is a freedom fighter. So uh, let me uh, briefly read out his bio. Uh, the audience, Mr. Mafidul Hawk is the founder trustee of the Liberation War Museum, and is also the director of the Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice, where he advances his vision of peace both nationally and globally. He is the key organizer of seven international conferences on Bangladesh genocide and justice, and the last one uh, being held in October 2019. He is also an author and social activist of repute. He has written more than a dozen books on social cultural study and history. He has been awarded with the Bangla Academy Literary Prize and the Akushay Padok National Award. He directs uh, the oral history project of the museum, which has accumulated more than 60,000 eyewitness accounts of the history. He is involved in promoting justice for genocide victims and the concept of peace and tolerance in this society. Without further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mofidul Haq. Sir, floor is yours. Sir, if you kindly unmute, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Kausar, and uh, I am thankful to uh, Bangladesh Center for Bangabandhu Studies in Canada and also uh, Bangladesh High Commission in Ottawa, His Excellency, Dr. Khalil Rahman is with us, and uh, I am really very proud and honored to be part of this panel, and uh, I think the, the presentation made by respected Professor Sayyid Madassar Ali and also Professor Dr. Sadiqa Halim has made it uh, difficult for me to say my, uh, present my views and also made it easier for me. I had a prepared speech, but I think I can skip that and highlight a few points that has been presented by Dr. Sayyid Madassar Ali and also Professor Sadiqa Halim. And first of all, we have so many things to say and to to say what we have to say in 10 minutes is really very really, very difficult and if we take one particular area we have uh, many many things to dwell upon but i think uh, when professor sadiq halim was uh, talking about equality and equity and i feel very proud that we have dr said mudassar ali here the uh, community clinic concept and its execution is a great example of what equality and equity 
for a society can be. And uh, I, I am so proud to be with him and I congratulate him for steering this vision of our Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and make it a reality where the primary health care has gone to the doorsteps, not only to the doorsteps, but as great uh, opportunity has been opened to the marginalized people. I think uh, when we, the theme is very interesting. We are uh, actually celebrating the uh, Julio Kuti Award bestowed upon Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman in 1973. And I think of those days we were in the final year of our university and we are part of the volunteers working for the uh, world peace council conference and the subsequent international conference and we found that so many distinguished people came to bangladesh to dhaka not only uh ramesh Chandro, the very eloquent speaker and a very respected person in the global arena but also members of the representative of the various national liberation movement. I remember Alfred Zo, he was at that time the Secretary General of African National Congress. He was there, the representative of the Namibian Liberation Front. Also, the PLO was very much, uh, very strongly represented. And Professor Bishop Huddleston, a Anglican uh, bishop representing the Church for Peace. and. So it was really a galaxy, and Krishna Menon was also there at that time, a very respected politician in, uh, in, from India. And uh, it was really honoring Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, as the leader of the national liberation struggle. And that we, we could feel about that, but I think we could not understand the dimension and the uh, the uh, very important role that Bangabundu played for the emancipation of the third world country. And later on, when uh, I was uh, got the privilege to work with UNESCO on this memory of the World International Register regarding the seventh March speech, uh, I feel that it is a great honor that I got when the submission was made to the UNESCO. It was a joint uh, proposal by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Liberation War Museum. And Ministry of Foreign Affairs was represented by Ambassador Shahidul Islam. He was in Paris at that time. Now he is representing Bangladesh in Washington, D.C. And uh, when UNESCO in the first round they accepted the proposal, they had many inquiries. And I remember that one of the inquiries they had is, was that this speech is very important for Bangladesh, for the nation. But what is the relevance for the global community? And we have highlighted the issue that uh, what Pongamundu has actually uh, all through his life, he has struggled for the right of the people for self-determination, right of the Bengali nation. And he understood very well that the structure of Pakistan it became a semi-colonial state. And it was a colonial domination, although it was a single state. So the right of the nations for self-determination is very important. And also what uh, Professor Said Mudassar Ali has said is, is very illuminating and we also try to highlight that, that Bangamundu always followed the constitutional path of struggle. He had his great commitment in democracy and the 1970 election has changed the whole scenario and Bangamundu had the vision and to, to understand that he can take the mandate of the people and struggle with, the, with this mandate. And the seventh March speech was really a reflection of all these lifelong struggles, the constitutional path, and what Professor Sayyid has said, the non-violent path. And this is very important. And so we highlighted the issue of the self-determination and also the constitutional path of the struggle. And I can read out from the UNESCO uh, citation or explanation where they, when they recognized the seventh March speech, they uh, also uh, uh, they wrote that uh, the uh, I quote um, the speech constitutes a faithful documentation of how failure of post-colonial nation states to develop inclusive democratic society alienates the population belonging to different ethnic, cultural, linguistic, or religious groups. The speech effectively declared 
the independence of Bangladesh. I think this uh, uh, understanding by UNESCO is a great is a recognition of the vision of Bangabandhu that we are talking about, and also he the he made his struggle in a divided world, but he went beyond division, and he represented the right of the nation for self determination, and also uh, in very strong way he uh, highlighted the issue of democracy or constitutional path and non-violence. And here I would like to uh, quote from a observ observation made by Henry Kissinger, the US National Security Advisor. They were very much against the emergence of Bangladesh and he, till the last moment, till in also in the final days of December, he tried to instigate China to attack India so that he can achieve an stalemate in the political scenario. But as a professor of uh, global studies, he has the uh, acumen and cunningness to understand what is really happening. And about the seventh month speech, he made a uh, classified note to uh, the then President Richard Nixon. And he, he said that uh, Rahman has embarked on a Gandhian type non-violent, non-cooperation campaign which makes it harder to justify repression. And the West Pakistani lacked the military capacity to put down a full-scale revolt over a long period. He could understand the significance of Bangabandhu's non-cooperation, non-violent uh, movement. And I think these are the very important thing when we look for to build an inclusive society, to look for a society which uh, will have the rights recognized and uh, what Bangabundu did and how he steered the struggle is very important. And here I can mention just uh, one thing that as a legacy of the uh, memory of the World International Register Recognition of 7th month speech, now UNESCO is working to make a popular version of different memory of the world uh, inscription, which they have accepted. And regarding the 7th March speech, I am working with them, so this can be illustrated book. They have highlighted and we have highlighted two points of the uh, sustainable development goal. One is the goal 16, which is for peace and diversity. And they also say that goal 10 is also important, which is that marginalization and alienation affects the society as a whole. And that was the scenario in broad terms in Pakistan and the Bengali people revolted against it. And also for every society, it is important that for Bangladesh, we are working under the avid leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to reduce the marginalization and alienation. I think all this emanates from the great speech, great visionary, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. And he has laid down the path and the nation has now reunited itself and following that path and it is a great responsibility that we have on our shoulder to analyze Bangabundu in the uh, backdrop of the new reality and make bring out the strong features that for which he sacrificed his love, his life for the younger generation, which Professor Sadiqa Halim was helping again and again. And that is very important for the younger generation and for the global community as a whole. And I think the BCBS has a role to play and we'll be very happy to work in partnership with them in promoting these ideals of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much uh, once again uh, for, uh, in fact, uh, uh, bringing all the relevant aspects of the legacy of the father of the nation today. Uh, and it's an honor to host you as a freedom fighter of Bangladesh in 1971. So uh, the audience, uh, we have come at the end of the session. And as we promised, we'll cap it with uh, within one hour. So now uh, let me uh, once again uh, welcome uh, the chief patron of Bangabandhu Center of Bangladesh Studies and the Honorable High Commissioner of Bangladesh in Canada uh, for his uh, closing remarks. Sir, once again, you are welcome. Uh, Dr. Kausar, thank you once again. I don't dare to really summarize you know, these rich discussions, they're all, you know, uh, so um, qualified and uh, knowledgeable people uh, about the work history of uh, Bangabundu. So I just like to share a few uh, thoughts. As you know, uh, I have said in the beginning, the center will be working uh, in promoting 
global peace and security and of course uh, in collaboration with canada because i am the high commissioner of bangladesh in canada so whatever i do i would like to involve my host country because they believe in this basic you know uh, uh, tenets of, of 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 human rights and uh, as uh, we have said that you know uh, the government of bangladesh i think in collaboration with the uh, Bangladesh chapter of the World Peace Council will be organizing the World Peace Conference in Dhaka on 4th and 5th of December. Uh, we are planning from the center to organize a thematic session where the participants, both from Bangladesh and Canada, uh, will be uh, discussing uh, Bangabandhu's philosophy, thoughts of peace uh, and development. And uh, we'll be working with the Global Affairs Canada, which is the counterpart of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh. Also, you know, the think tank that are supported by the government of Canada, like Institute of Peace and Diplomacy and others like that. So uh, we uh, hope to uh, get some of you uh, in that session. So that is my uh, uh, request and uh, expectation. Uh, also, as uh, Professor Mudassar uh, Elisar said, you know, he's uh, quite blind to me on, uh, I think, most occasions but also very critical of me uh, when I make mistakes. So I always appreciate that. But uh, one, uh, there is a one, uh, I think, uh, at least one point that you know, we never disagree, that is promoting the ideologies of the father of the nation, Bhagavad Gita, Brahman, and our unflinching loyalty to his legacy of blood, the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. You know, I know uh, he is uh, addressed by the Honorable Prime Minister Mudassir Bhai, yeah. And uh, I know uh, how uh, he's treated. Uh, uh, so I, I, I have been eyewitness uh, uh, on many occasions. So it, it's a pleasure to really uh, uh, have you know someone like uh, him uh, with us in the center. And uh, I'm thinking of how we can involve uh, you, sir, uh, in the work of the uh, center. Mufdilak, uh, <laughs> sir, I already uh, discussed some issues with you. I mean, uh, one thing I like to say today is that as uh, director for the Center of the Study of Genocidal Justice, you know, as we discussed on the other uh, occasions, that we'll be working with the Human Rights Museum in Winnipeg, uh, and how we can get the Genocide Day, 25th of March, recognized also by the world, because that was a bigger genocide uh, there are many that have been already recognized by the world community, but our son is still not recognized by the world community. So I'll be working uh, with the with the organization and anybody in the country that how we can get it recognized. So I, I look forward to your support. And Professor Sadek Alim, you know, she has been with us since the very first, you know, webinar, and uh, she is already an advisor to the center. And uh, I guess, you know, uh, the letters, I don't know whether have been sent to uh, the other two distinguished, you know, by panelists today, that we really like you to really advise us how the center can uh, work uh, in promoting peace uh, and philosophy uh, of Bangabandhu, uh, not only in Bangladesh, not only in Canada, but across the world. Professor uh, Mudasari sir has just uh, tried to uh, refer to certain areas of my work here. I was working in the UN, I came here to serve uh, the government of the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. So that's my personal commitment. Uh, I, I was doing a better job, much more remunerated uh, at the level of director in the UN system, but I left that job. Uh, so I, I, and I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying. I really feel, uh, you know, uh, very grateful to the country, to the Honorable Prime Minister that I have been given this opportunity. Uh, you know, when we talk about justice, uh, Everybody recognizes that every victim or a family of every victim has the right to get justice. Not as the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, as a person, Sheikh Hasina and her family deserves justice. What has uh, happened or what happened on the night of 15th of August? So, I mean, uh, I made it very clear to my host country that Canada being a country of rule of law that promotes and protects human rights, that preaches, you know, uh, peace, uh, advocates for global peace and security, cannot host 
a heinous main self confessed convicted killer like nur choudhury on the soil of canada and you know uh, we have been studying even this existing uh, legal instrument of canada and we think that even with the existing legal uh, context uh, we can take back this killer to face the verdict so this is uh, possible uh, and we will be working on that and that that is always in a peaceful way huh? not not just you know capturing someone uh, not you know uh, like musad or cia okay get someone you know, from the house and uh, just, just put on a special plane and take the no in a peaceful legal way we'll do it this is the teaching of bangabandhu that in non violent peaceful legal way we'll be trying our best to get it done and you know in in canada especially in dsa in uk and in canada there are anti bangladesh propaganda and we also like to address this in a peaceful way using the existing legal instrument legal uh, system of this country and it is also possible so uh, i'm very happy that you know i have been getting a lot of support from uh, my countries and uh, the center is working with the canadian authorities the high commission is working closely with the center and with the with the global affairs canada that you know these are our priorities and in the people of canada wants that people of canada do not want uh, this country to really uh, do something or hurt someone who has who is a flagrant violators of human rights so these are the commitments so uh, uh, as high commissioner definitely i'll be implementing the government policy you know i'll be implementing uh, the instruction instructions uh, uh, advices of the government and i'll be doing that and my last point is that the center will promote and will explore the possibility uh, of new areas where both canada and bangladesh can work together and can promote global peace and security so with that i once again thank you all you know it's a pleasure for me and pleasure for the center to have such a distinguished you know panel of speakers today uh, in this biennial thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank you sir for your uh, concluding remarks so dear audience uh, we have to say goodbye now it is just over one hour uh, formally uh, uh, concluding the session i would like to once again uh, do a formal round of gratitude to all the distinguished panelists who spent uh, their valuable hours uh, at night in bangladesh so once again uh, thank you uh, ma'am and sirs for your kind contribution today Dear audience, a uh, couple of interesting points that the panelists brought home for all of us. Uh, one is younger generation, those who are growing up uh, outside Bangladesh, uh, they should be made aware of the glorious caste history of Bangladesh, the leadership of Bangladesh through whose hand the liberty, equality, diversity, secularism, human rights, and nonviolent struggles came into fruition. And this is what the center aims to do in the future as well with your help. So uh, let me conclude by saying that Bangabandhu is not a leader of Bangladesh. Actually, his visions and legacies, as Mr. Mufidul Haq rightly mentioned, is global. And that is why his 7th of March speech is uh, so universal. And it has an universal appeal that we ought to read and reread. And with this note, uh, let me uh, say good night to all the panelists, those who joined from Bangladesh. And dear audience, those who have tuned from Canada, uh, enjoy the rest of the sunny uh, summer uh, in Canada, which we won't last long. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.